What's up, y'all? Today's day 206, making song bringer. Today I'm gonna be making a story system. Yesterday, I was working on getting dialogues created so the player can talk. Finally, man, I've been waiting to do this for a while. Can't believe I kept putting it off. Um, but now, so I've got dialogues started, right? Um, and uh, this is, I need to um, mess with this a little bit. So. That pipe character between the words making and me needs to become a new line. And it's not supposed to say the character's name. So um, what it's doing is it's reading straight from my strings. So I've got the strings all set up. Here's three different bits of dialogue that the game is going to play. Story, waterfall, 1A, 1B, 1C. And each one of these things is, has built in which character is saying what. So it'll actually find that character and put the dialogue above their head and um, say this and then parse this pipe into a new line. And this is all going to be driven based on these this story type of um, dot, this story data here. So this is um, Waterfall 1A, right? It's going to trigger this Waterfall 1A dialogue if there is a flag called Waterfall and inherently in every one of these, it's, it's um, what's up, professional novice? <laughs> yeah, you're the first. Uh, um, inherent in all these is it can't ever, you know, have already done itself. So if it hasn't done Waterfall 1A, and also it didn't do Waterfall 2A, which I haven't written yet, but I'm just putting this in as an, as an example. If I wanted to have an alternate dialogue like Waterfall 2A, then I can... Um, What's up, Azenris? I love the first second. First post! Oh, yeah! Oh! Um, so, yeah, this would look like something like this, right? Um, waterfall uh, didn't do Waterfall 1A. Do some dialogue. Which also, this word, dialogue... It's going to be kind of um, not really, kind of meaningless, actually. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. I had some ripples to it since last night, but I want to add some bigger ripples. So there's like, these are just the tiny ripples that you would get from like a water hopper or whatever. So I'll do another animation where it's got a big ripple and then apply that big ripple down there too. So it kind of looks a little better. So yeah, first goal is um, to process these in bits of information. So take out the character's uh, name there and replace the pipes with new lines. So I've moved the um, dialogue into a more appropriate place here in this in this enims function or uh, C++ source file. I'm really excited to have all my animations sort of in one place. So this is anywhere where I might typically use a run action is a good place to put an ims so that they're all in the same source file. So if I ever want to change my animations, I'm really only going to have to change or recompile one file. What's up, Alex Pita? And then typically these files like I'll be I'll be working on animations or systems. The, the real whole point of this was to take out all these animations from the systems. So the systems are more of like you know data, a modifying data, um, you know triggering things to happen, but not not so much running all these complex actions and things like that. Or the pure animations, these animations and actions, those belong in here. So. If I ever want to change my animations, I don't have to go recompile my whole system. And if I ever want to change my systems, I don't have to re go and recompile all the animations. So, anyways. Um, yeah, let's start processing this out. So, this dialogue thing is not even going to need the EID for the character. It'll get it from, from the text. So, um, first of all, if the text is empty, well, 
we'll return. Now, um, so let's extract the character name from this. And we might as well pipe out the um, or change uh, place. Place string. Here we go. Subject text. The search we want to replace is pipe replacement new line. I believe this returns a value, so I'd go text equals replace string. Yeah. Okay, next thing I want to ac extract the character's name from this and then get the E in based on that character. So uh, we'll go auto pause equals text stop find find that colon now if that's not found wait then we return oh Alex Pita I got everything in the in the right files for you now too so it's Strings N is the English version, and then strings it would be the strings the Italian version. So it's now all way easier to edit now that it's not in a property list file. And and yeah, all the story is gonna be built into here too. So everything that needs to be localized is all in one file. Okay, so now the character's name. Is text dot. Subster. Zero to pause. And the text equals. Subster. Pause plus one, I believe. Let's find. Let's see if that worked. Um, and then we'll get the eid. So the auto eid equals name component. Find. So we're finding the character based on the character's name. Now, now we've gotten to here. We can go if eid equals zero or text dot size less than or equal to zero. Might as well make this pragmatic there too. Return. There. So I'll set some breakpoints here to make sure all this is, is working. And then we'll just do it. Man, today I was working on, all this morning I was working on all these characters, adding characters that weren't there. So I did a lot of work to make this font really really awesome I made all I made sure all of the um, the spacing after the fonts all work now in this in these text files so it's really great that now now every single letter when it's rendered has really good good consistent spacing okay so we got the text I should start as yeah yeah this whole string Turn off that. Yeah, so it's still got its pipe. After that, cool, we replaced the pipe with a new line. Now pause should turn out to be something like three. Yeah, three, cool. Um, now character name, a substring of that. Character comes out to be rock, perfect. 
text equals the substring of the remainder, which is now, that sound is making me thirsty. Perfect. Ian, name component find. Bam, we got it. First try. Oh, man. Hell yeah. First try. Code worked as expected. So now when we do this, um, we should have rock saying that text, and it should be, yeah, there we go. Sounds making me thirsty. Cool. All right. Okay, now the next thing to do is to turn this into a system. So we need some kind of system which goes and scans through the story file every single tick. Or maybe not every single tick, but basically periodically it should go and scan through these and go, hey, is there anything I need to play? I haven't played yet. And then it just plays stuff. And this will work for music as well as dialogue, and it'll be procedural. So some games you'll see all the so, you know, maybe 50, 60 percent of the dialogue. You don't you're not gonna see all the dialogue every time because sometimes there's even random dialogue you're not gonna hit each time. So breaks in. <laughs> Yes, 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 good idea, good, good idea. idea. Oh. oh, man. That's got to be an Easter egg. Oh, dude, I got I to gotta put this on the Easter egg list or the idea list. It's so great. Oh, the sound messed up again? Oh, okay. All right. Huh. I wonder I wonder if it's my game. Let me Okay, let me re, let me run the game again and see if it messes up again. Right? Okay. There's some dialogue. Okay, so has the audio messed up again? Because I'm wondering if it's maybe the fact that my game is using a lot of CPU or GPU, and maybe that's conflicting with OBS. Let me know if there's any issues there. Because I can run the game in a smaller window, and that'll probably help. No, no problem. All right. All right, well, it must have been some weird glitch then. Okay, um, yeah, we need a system. System for running dialogue or story. Call it the story system. Might as well. Needs a tick. There we go. All right, let's get that compiling. So we now we got a story system. Let's hook it up into the overall tick. I don't think I need to declare. Yeah, we're good there. We just need to declare it down here in the tick. So uh, before render system, before AI. Before input. Yeah, I guess it doesn't, it doesn't really matter that much. It's, this isn't a system that's going to interact with other systems that much. So, well, if anything, it should, I guess it should run close to the beginning. Oh, I guess input system, yeah, I should go first. Okay, cool. Now we've got the tick hooked up. Now we just need to write that tick method for story system. So, Uh, and I guess the story system should have a val tree. Yeah. This should be a static of Val Valtry. Um, and 
and should have one more method here. Static void. Let's put this on the line. Um, clear, I guess, is a good word for this. Story system dot clear will will um, reset its story tree. So if if I happen to mo modify the story data, like this might be a, make it more efficient to modify this file tree over time, then story system clear will reset it. And so there's this thing in area where it calls world create. Actually, world create world. What's up, chaos? Nice, right on. Thanks, man. Thanks for choosing me. That's great. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, the waterfall's looking great, man. Let me show you. That's what it looks like. And uh, today I'm working on a story system. So Rock will be able to say stuff. Jib will be able to say stuff. Everybody's going to be able to talk. Color scene, we don't need to worry about that one. What's this one? Oh, this is overworld scene. Yeah, here's one we need to worry about. World, create world here. This is where it, game, load game, create heroes. Yeah, so story system clear. All right. Now let's start creating these methods to, to run the story system. Yeah, let's put it at the end. Nice, right on. Thanks, man. Glad you like it. Auto foo. Yeah, it's my name, Foo. Get instance. So we're just grabbing the file utils and then loading a string. Get string from file. We just want to load story dot text. I do believe calling parse data will erase. Yeah, that clears a vow tree. So really, all I got to do every time. I want to clear the story is just reparse it the story.txt file. I'll set a breakpoint there to make sure it's actually working. Oh man. Chaos.
Nice, right on, Chaos. Okay, there, we parsed the story tree. Let's see, we should have a look. Oh, I guess we need to show all variables. There it is, story system, story tree. What we got? All right, yeah, we got waterfall 1A. Bam, it loaded it correctly. That's what I want to see. It's got some children. This one child, flags, waterfall, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, cool. We've loaded the story tree successfully. Next move. Now we need a system which goes and loops over the elements of the story tree and looks for things that it can run that haven't run been run already. So the player needs some way to track that it's um, that he's played these things and then say and then that gets saved to the the save game. So. I could either put it in a story element or in the gear. It's probably a better move to put it in the gear because the gear is kind of already set up for all that. Gear component. I mean, I guess I could have a story component as well, which might be better. So, okay, let me think about this. Uh, yes, if you're if you want to get your game on Steam, you got to get on Steam Greenlight. Um, there was some talk the other couple years ago, actually, that Steam was going to get away from doing the Greenlight system, but they never ended up doing it. That was that was an article written in like January of 2014. So it's a year and a half later, they still have Greenlight. So I don't know if. We had this discussion a few days ago on the stream, and um, I think Greenlight's an incredibly good thing for indie gamers, or for indie game developers. So I highly recommend it. It's so great. It's such a great process for um, creating exposure and awareness for your game and building a following for your game and getting people to write articles about your game. Greenlight is rad. No matter how long it takes you to go through Greenlight. In fact, the longer you go through Greenlight, the more overall traffic you tend to get. Okay, so some entities are going to have gear components, but are not going to want story components. Uh, in fact, oh my gosh, so the it's not like the story is tied to a certain entity, really. In fact, it's almost like the story system should store the variables for what it's done and what it hasn't done. Because, yeah, that's actually, that's probably the way to do it. Because if I were to store this in rock all the times, rocks data, rocks gear component, that wouldn't be quite right. Because some of these things are based on jib and some of these things are based on maybe other heroes and characters and stuff like that. What's up, Momir? So yeah, I think I'm gonna, wow, wow, man, that means that this story system is gonna have data. But it already does. Ah, I think this is the right way to do it. So the story system will become independent of Independent of any hero. Doesn't even need a hero. Doesn't even need a hero component or any kind of entity to run this that way. Yes, decisions, right? I think this is the right way to do it. My instincts tell me this, this design will be a good way to do it. So this is an independent of any kind of components, but yet it has data. I think that's okay. All right, so we're gonna do a static map of strings that have been oh wait 
No, I don't want those to be bulls. I want those to be able to be ints. So in some cases, this is going to be just, um, we'll call this story data. Uh, so yeah, so going back. Hello, Hang Gad. Welcome to the stream. So yeah, going back to this story data structure here. Um, this is the keys, right? All these keys, waterfall 1A, for example, is a, is a bit of story, one little dialogue element. And once it's played this dialogue, it's going to go into this story data and store the key, waterfall 1A, and increment it by default. But there might be some cases where I want to set, I don't know, my variable to 2, for example. And that would, that would set, you know, set this integer up to be something else. So it's possible, it's good that this story data is an integer because I can play with that later on. Okay, um, let's go to back to the system. Now we need it. Okay, let's start compiling again because we need this new data structure set up there. So now we've got a map of strings to ints story system. Story data. I was just thinking about um, this clear method. Actually, this would be in a different place now. Yes. Yeah, I did do that already. Let me know. Get you the link. Imager. I'm going to do some better ones too. I got to sign in. There. Remember me forever. Don't ask for my sign in ever again. Images, I think it's this one. Is this really big? How do I tell, about, yeah, 1.4 megs, that's probably, yeah, that's right. No, it's way smaller than 1.4 megs, but anyways. I think this is it right here, check this out. Yeah, RPG dev, that's how that's gonna clear itself automatically. Good question, right? Very good question. This will automatically clear itself with this when we call story system clear. Right? So story system clear goes story data dot clear. Right? But the game load is what's gonna need to actually load back in this story to oh, so I need one more thing hooked up into this. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Um Yeah, we might as well pass it in here. Const map string int ref. And we might as well type def this too. So yeah, so when, when it calls clear, or let's just actually call this set data now. So set data is gonna be called from the game load. So when it loads the game, it'll go, it'll go into it and read its like save game file, and then it'll load, there'll be some entity which loads in all the stuff that the, all the story data will be all in like one or whatever. And then so that'll get loaded, passed into the story system via set data. Okay, there. Um, now, system. Of course, it's going to fail a little bit here. Oh, whoops. Dyslexia. I do that all the time. I always switch my P's and Q's as well. Can I make it smaller? Of course, man. Uh, 
Okay, um, where the heck is that file anyways? Songbringer. I think I called it, car yeah, it's called Cartridge. That's in sprites, backgrounds. Cartridge 2. All right, I'm ready for you whenever you let me know. Oh, iPhone size? Sure. 4S size? Okay, thanks for specifying. 4S is um, before it went 16 by 9. 4S is still the 480 by 320, which is 960 by 640. So you need 960 by 640, which is... Let me make a little... Um, this is... This document is 205, so if you got uh, 960, oh, this is what, 640, isn't it, 1.5, yeah, 1.5, um, times 205, it's 308, so I'm going to turn that off, get you this window, it's 308. Oh, whoops. No, no, no. We need um, 205 over 1.5, 137. Yeah, I've written a lot of games for Apple. So, that looks good. Hey, what's up, Zelda Ethan? All right, now just resize this up to 960 by 640. Oh, can unconstrain these proportions, set this exactly right. There you go, file, save for web. Desktop. Uh, not much, man. I'm just working on this um, this dialogue system. I'm creating a a background for Chaos Gaming here. There you go. Oh, you're in high school now? What? Whoa, man. Are you 15 yet? Are you still 14? Okay, back to the dialogue system. Set data. We don't need to call clear anymore. We want set data. Nice, you're still 14, right on. Hey, what's up, Vlad? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm working on this dialogue system. So um, let me show you what, it, what I'm working on right now. I'm working on this, getting it so it can, a system will go through each of the dialogue components. So I've got three little bits of dialogue started, right? This is 1A, 1B, and, and oh, it should be 1C. One C, so flags waterfall, and if it did two or one, if it did one B, did one A, did one B, yeah. So these three little elements of dialogue right here, 
will run these bits of dialogue inside here. So Rock talks, Jib says something in reply, and then Rock replies to him. So this little bit of dialogue, I'm working on a system which can run these bits of dialogue now. So this should be clear in story system. We don't need to call this anymore because game load game is going to be the thing that actually clears this, the dialogue system. Oh, nice, man. My birthday is December 11th. That's really close. We're only a week apart. Nice. You got Ubuntu? Good for you. That's better than doing a, a virtual box. I know you're thinking about doing that. What's up, Funky Paladin? Cool. I'm glad Ethan knows the answer because I didn't know about that, whether Game Maker works on Mac or not. Oh, you want portrait? Oh, okay. No worries. Easy, man. So I think that was um, the other way around, right? So 1.5 times 205 was like 3 something, 308. Yeah, yeah, thanks for remember, remembering. Oh, cool, you're in December too? Nice, we got the December crew today. What's up, December crew? There's so many of us, we should band together. Oh, check this out, this is exactly right already, never mind. Okay, we'll just save this for web again. But this time you want, um, Uh, all right, there you go, Chaos Gaming. I should make these available on songbringer.com too. I'll just keep it on my desktop so I remember to do that. Okay, so now when the game loads, we're gonna load the story data. And when the game saves, we'll save the story data. But we don't need to do that first. First thing we need to do is make it so the system can just roll through what it has and hasn't done and see if it's got some stuff it can it can um it can play. So Let's just do, let's do a loop over all the stuff in the story data. So V is going to be the val tree. Now we'll do um, I is the current item in the story tree. And then we get the child. The first child of that gives us the siblings for the other data in it. So auto ref v equals i dot get first child. Um, and then, okay, so let's keep this really simple at first. So if we haven't done this key already, Okay, we need we need some kind of timing too. I just realized that we're gonna to need to return. So in Ims, when it does dialogue, it needs to return a floating point value for how long this current dialogue is going to be. Oh, um, nice, right on. 
I don't know. Um, okay, and now we need some kind of thing which says, uh, like some timer. So it's not going to like trigger anything in the dialogue system until after a certain time in the future. So we need one more static variable. Let's call it a timer. So it just ticks downward. That's more simple than setting a time. And we'll make it an int float or an int double. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so the enims for dialog. So we'll return zero. All these are going to return zero. Uh, I don't know. This depends on your monitor. I, it, it doesn't. Twenty-three inches doesn't actually say what your monitor is going to be as far as a resolution. That's that's totally dependent on your on your settings, your platform you're running on, and your monitor and the the available settings it has for it. So you just got to figure it out for your monitor. All right, so here we're going to return the overall duration. Cool, we got that set up. So now we've got a timer variable and that float set up. So in system, we can hook up this variable. And that defaults to zero, that's cool. And then when we're, we're clearing this too, we can just go um, timer dot, timer equals zero. So here we're gonna tick down the timer. If timer is greater than zero, timer minus equals fixed delta. If timer is less than zero, timer equals zero. And then after we run the timer, if the timer is still greater than zero, we're going to return. So it's just a timer that kind of turns off the story system for a minute. Oh, nice. Well, cool. If you need me to make a, um, another background for you, just let me know. But that, other, that first link I sent you might work. What music do I like making? I like making electronic music that has a breakbeat. A breakbeat is anything that's not a four on the floor. I do. I strongly dislike four on the floor music. Four on the floor music means that the kick and the snare are always on the one, the two, the three, or the four. I, I believe that creates very boring music, at least, at least in my opinion. So I don't really like boring, repetitive music. I like dynamic music with with beats, break beats. The break beats mean that the the kick's not always on the one, for example, you know, or the two, or whatever. The snare is not always on the two. It's like it messes th with the beat. It's a very cool thing. The Amen break beat was the very first break beat ever, from what I understand. I might be wrong about my musical history there, but Amen break beat was a break beat that hip hop artists took from an old soul group. I forget what group, but if you look it up, if you look up the history of the Amen break beat. You can look into that. Uh, okay, so if we don't have... Um, oh, i.key. So if i.getKey.size, 
is less than or equal to zero, then return or break or continue this bit of the loop. So now we get guaranteed as a key. What's PVZ music? Sweet, is his name Pierre? I might have known that already. Sorry if I forgot that. Whoa, whoa. Check it out, man. You're making progress. Ooh, whoa, one way. One way tiles. One way thingies, whatever you call them. Sweet, oh, and you got ice. Ooh, no, not the frying pan. Don't jump in the frying pan. Don't do it, man. I know you, oh, no. <laughs> Nice progress, man. Nice, Vlad. Sweet. Okay, so if the story data, um, or story data for i dot get key is already greater than zero, which means we've run that before. Continue. Okay, so now we've gotten in here, we know we can run this key. Hey, what's up, Cobile? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna run every single story element to start with that hasn't been run at all before. So let's, I'm gonna ignore this. Let's um, let's take that out for now so we can just run all three of these when we run the game. And then I'll start processing the flags and processing the didn'ts and the dids. Nice. Uh, so if well, yeah, we we'll just run this. So timer plus equals and nims dialog. With the key is going to be I dot get key. Yeah. Hello, Mind Rage. Okay, so let's see if this worked. Um, and if it does, you know, it doesn't do them back to back, so. Okay, so it's not working, something's wrong here. It should have already triggered that dialog. Now, see, I just triggered it manually by pressing the button. Okay, let's figure out what's going wrong. What's up, Arctic Raj? Okay, I'm not sure what's going on wrong with this tick story system tick, so I'm gonna figure it out here. Just step through. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I haven't even worked that hard on those yet. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna get some better ripples going, some bigger ripples. So this is more of like a, you know, a big thing. It needs to do bigger ripples. Let 
Nice. Oh, cool, dude. Very cool. You're using C. It's so rad. Oh, I love C. If C++ wasn't so awesome, I would use C again. Okay, so I. What's I? Oh, well, there you go. It didn't even have a story tree. Oh, probably because the game system didn't even load anything. No problem. Okay, so the game system needs a bit where it um, at least at least loads the story system's data. So where's load game? Load game. Here we go. Load game. We're gonna after this we do all these things. We're gonna load the story data, set skins, load map positions, load playtime, load secrets, set up HUD. Here's where we'll load the story. Um, right, we'll write some code to load this from the save file and then go story system, set data. So we'll create a story system map type. Story data. Story data. There. Nice, Ethan. Yeah, I keep making it, man. It's It goes for anybody that's making art or music or anything with aesthetic value. The more you make it, the more you will realize what you want to make, and the more you, the better you'll get at making that type of art. So just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep making music. Don't judge it, right? Don't judge your music because, especially at first, you're gonna be you, you're gonna be tempted to judge your music or share it with friends, and they'll judge it. The same thing with art and with code. Man, making games is also an art form. So it's like. Don't let people stop you from doing what you love. Just keep doing it anyways, and eventually you will become great. You will become amazing, and your friends will eventually go, oh my god, he's a great musician, or oh my god, that guy's a great game developer. You know, it takes a lot of time, but that's the only way I know how, how to go about becoming great at anything. It's just doing enough of it. Yeah. Singleton? What you mean? Any marketing suggestions? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, in general, all of this is, is good th good stuff to do, right? I do have some marketing advice. I, I My marketing advice would be to start from day one and, and share your game and build a following before you ever try and market it. Um, that's that's kind of compressing a lot of information into one simple topic one, one simple thing is just keep sharing your game from the very first day you make your game so you've built a following before you ever go and and, mar and release it or share it with the world or, or publish it to the world i guess you should say and then there's some also um there's also some great articles here it is this game this is the one i was thinking of Game developments .tuts plus. Yeah, this is a great article to read. Make sure you read all this and do all start doing all this stuff. Yeah, you're welcome, Ethan. Uh, yeah, Momir, it already is. Yeah, the story system is technically a singleton. It's just one single story system data. And I chose to go this route because I, I wasn't going to put the data for it in the gear component of the player. But then I realized you're going to be switching who is the active player. Sometimes you're going to be the girl. Sometimes you're going to be the boy. Sometimes, you know, maybe you'll play as Jib. Or if you're a second player, you're playing as Jib. So some entities are going to have gear components, but they're not necessarily going to have story so I want to store all the story system data in just the story system. So I've got a singleton already created for it, and these um, these static values right here to store the data for it, the story system. What's up, Vok? 
What's up, Marzipower? Nice. What game is it, man? This is a zombie game or something? Horror? Whoa. Looks scary. Super scary. Man. Okay, so yeah, next step in the story system. I think it's loaded the data, so now we should be able to run this and theoretically it should play the, all the data for the, the three different story elements we have so far. Let's see. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it's just, just a story system. Well, I'll, I'll tell you in a sec here. I ran them all at the same time. Okay, so we need to, uh, for some reason it didn't set a timer. Okay, we'll figure that out. But uh, yeah, Mars Power, let me show you how this um, this works here. <laughs> oh, sorry man. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah, good for yeah. Whatever, however we want to market it, do it that way. You know, I would definitely recommend starting to share it before, before you ever pub, before your publish date. But you know, that's my my opinion, my take on it. Nice man, right on. Well, what's up? Oh, been tons, tons. It's up. Um, but you know, this last week I made this whole um waterfall here so that's what i've been working on most of this week and now i'm working on a dialogue system a story system so but here's this waterfall right you can go behind this waterfall there's even a secret behind here but i'm not going to say what it is so yeah so mars of power here's how the story system works um here's the story elements right so the story is a procedural dialogue type system right so some games when you play that some um, adventures that you launch with this game or whatever, um, you'll be. You'll, I'm guessing you'll see probably around 60% of the story each time, right? So there's going to be a lot. Some of, and it's all based on elements in the world too. So like if you've some worlds will have certain entities and certain things. So some worlds will create different dialogue. So all these are going to be based. All these little story elements. Each one of these is one little element. And it's going to have flags, like things that can trigger that, or like items, like maybe you have to have the sword or whatever, or the the fire orb for this for this certain story element to trigger. And so that's how it's a procedural dialogue system based on the items you've collected in this world and the, the other things that, have, that are that are existent in this world. So that's basically it. And then all this still this whole story system hooks into the actual strings. So all the strings are, can be localized. So yeah, so this is the whole the one file that you'll need that'll need to be localized is this strings file. Cool man. Yeah, please keep me posted. Oh man, I just explained. Awesome, right on, cool. Well, uh, yeah, I'm excited for you to see it. Let me know if you see anything cool. You're like, whoa. Oh, I, I gotta show you this too. These, um, let me show you the lightning sword. The lightning sword is pretty dope. There's the lightning sword, there's the ice sword, fire sword, ghost sword, fear sword. All these are projectiles that you can launch from your sword if you have that item. So this is the, the lightning sword. It like, like strikes the ground where you hit the enemy, and then it strikes the ground again somewhere else randomly on the screen. 
So sometimes you can even get hit with your own lightning. But I may fix that so you can, it's more of a skill based thing. Uh, no, I, I'm thinking for now, Mighty Mighty Ness, that this is going to be a pop up. So it doesn't some well, not all of them will be pop ups. So some of these will be um, things that you have to press a button for some of the text to go by, and then some of them I'm intending for them to just be pop ups. They just appear. They don't inter. They don't even. They don't stop your gameplay at all. So um, so yeah, I think it's going to be kind of a flexible system that can do either one of those. What's up, Kotix? Thanks, Vlad. What's up, Arcor? Nice, right on. Okay, so um, as you guys are seeing, the dialogue system is, or the story system is just playing all the dialogue at once. So let's figure out what the hell is going on to make it so it's, um, it's doing that. So. I guess I'll set a breakpoint here. We'll just figure it out. What's up, Arcane? Oh, yeah, right. So many, right? Yeah, everybody's playing that game. Oh, sweet, Vok. Thank you, man. Oh, that's so rad. Uh, no, I'm not using El Capitan yet. Um, yeah, I was checking their site the other day, and they're, they've got their pricing and everything set up. So if you check out Fra Facebook um, Retro VGS, as as all the latest information's right here. They talk about it a lot. There you go. Uh, there should be audio. Hello, hello, hello. Looks like I still got green lights. Whoa. Cool. Thanks, Maui. Thanks for letting us know. Okay, so yeah, I've set a breakpoint inside the story system, and now I'm just kind of like going to step through and see what's going on. So the first time it gets in, there, it's um, it should. I'm gonna step over this method, so the timer for the system now should be story system timer. Yeah, we got a big old timer for that. Right, that's ten seconds. Cool. Yes, yeah, I, I, I wanted to say that earlier, but um, yeah, I had to get over this whole this whole thing big time when I first started this game. I was so afraid that people would like steal my ideas, especially if I live streamed. I was like, you know what, if I live stream and share all my code and share all my everything I'm making for my game, somebody's going to steal my stuff, but it's totally not true. You got to definitely, this is a huge fear for a lot of people, and um. I think the sooner you get over it, the better, the more successful you'll be. Okay, um, so it did create a timer. Why? Oh, okay. Duh, because if <laughs> it needs to break out of the loop if it's going to run something, right? So there. So let's do it now. And now we should have back-to-back -back audio rather than all the audio appearing at once. Exactly, Arcane. And even if somebody did try, I realize this, even if somebody did try and copy every single line of my code or every one of my art assets or whatever, they would still, they would still not know what I was going to do eventually with the game. So it's all good. Oh, 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 one more thing. So it just reran the same things. We need to go, once we've done this thing, we need to go story data, I dot get key. Plus equals one. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and to my knowledge, no one has even tried. So, you know. <laughs> See, can I make my own song bringer with blackjack and hookers? <laughs> nice, man. Oh, there you go. Cool, Mars Power. Yeah, it's it's totally, it's an irrational fear. Yeah. But this is very, very core to an indie game developer marketing their own game. It's getting over the fear of sharing their stuff. So I highly encourage anyone, if you have those fears, deal with them however you can. Okay, so next thing I want to make it so Jib, when Jib talks, it's going to be the alien font, so you can't understand him. <laughs> Even though I'm going to write all this dialogue for Jib anyways. Yeah! All right, we got we got dialogue working. It looks like it's it's staying on a little bit too long, though. Like, I want it to be long, but not that long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Kotix. Appreciate you saying that, man. Um, okay, so we'll go a little less time per letter. So there's a letter duration per... Um, letter duration is a third of a second. Let's set down down to 0. 0.2 seconds. Yeah, write it out like a terminal. Oh, that's a good idea, Unreal. Yeah, like each letter comes out one at a time. I like that. Nice, Cedric. Yeah. Um, well, the thing is, uh, maybe, maybe. Oh, that's a cool idea. Yeah. Might as well do that, because Rock, the entire game, will be able to understand. So the, he the hero, your character, he actually understands Jib, but we, as an audience, don't understand Jib, right? Because he's just talking in, in robot or whatever. But that is kind of a cool idea. You get an item... Um, Yeah, that's a cool item. That would be a rad, rad, like special type item that has that really has nothing to do with gameplay, but it's just cool. It has to do with the story and the lore and everything because you actually can understand Jib. I love that idea. Okay, let's start by making Jib talk with um, the alien font. You all right? <laughs> yeah, that's another bit of it, right? It would be a lot of work for somebody to try and steal all this code or whatever. So yeah, once again, irrational fear, totally irrational fear. And that's the easiest way to get over fear is to realize that it's irrational. Yeah, thanks, Zatrick. Appreciate that, man. Sometimes I forget the stuff I do for the community, but yeah, I have done a lot. Yes, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, I love it, I love it. I love not being able to understand Jim. Oh, I thought that was the game, but there's some weird sound out there. Yeah, totally unreal. Yeah, that's the, the, so check this out. This is how it's going to do that. Um, the story elements can have, I can do a totally different waterfall element, like two, right? And two is as long as we haven't done one, right? And then two B, two C. So I'm about to do this, but now, but now I need to implement didn't and did and flags. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and take off the original W here, and it's not going to be able to run those. 
Uh, Kotix, yeah, I have a YouTube. It has all my videos since day one of making this game. Um, and all my links and everything are at songbringer.com. But I'll, I'll totally paste this for you. It's, um, here's the YouTube. There's my Twitter and everything is on there too. It's all here on Songbringer. Thanks, Ark. Yeah, totally Maui, right? Yeah, totally, Ark. You got a good you got a good ethic there. That's really cool. I like that. Oh nice Vlad. I like that too. I'll add that to the ideas. That's cool. Some kind of story or secret maybe. Nice. Yes, yes. All right, yeah. So um, next thing, what do we want to do next? I think I want these NMs to have a slightly more opaque background. Where's that at? Oh, there it is. Oh, and I want Jib's talk to be a little more his string here. The water appears pretty da 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 da. Ah. Yeah, I guess that's that's just fine leaving his text like that. Uh Arctic Raj, no, I have not tried Swift or Sprite Kit. I've done Objective C and Coco's T Coco's 2D. But no, I haven't tried Swift, and so I don't have any thoughts on it. Actually, I do have thoughts on it. My big, my biggest thought about that is it's not cross-platform. So, um, you better be sure that if you're going to use those those tools, that you're absolutely certain that you're never ever going to want to write a cross-platform game. And I think that's going to be that's going to limit you a lot. Like just like yeah, just like Professional Novice says, it's way too limited. Because it, it limits you to one platform, and today video games need to be on multiple platforms to be successful, in my opinion. Yeah, that too, not portable. Um, well, you could consider it either one, uh, Arcor. Cocos, I'm using the Cocos 2D X game engine. It's a little bit different than Cocos 2D because it's cross-platform, but um, Cocos 2D X. You would call it a game engine, technically. You could also call it a game library. It's the same thing. It's, but essentially, a library is a little more, I guess, a little more of an accurate term because a game engine is something you kind of build for your own game once you... Pretty much every game you ever write is going to build its own kind of game engine of code, you know? So in, in I guess you could technically say that a game engine is something you build and a library is something you use that's a... I don't know, but they're kind of interchangeable terms, basically. <laughs> Unreal, this is so rad, too. I've been wanting to give him a little, um, like, laser beam or something like that, so you can, like, actually kind of either stun enemies or fight back, but I love that. I love that. Nice, I like how it all rotates. All right, what next? What next? Uh, did, was that enough um, transparency on the dialog boxes? Oh, and also I want to make it so... Um, Jib has a different color too. Oh yeah, let's make it so Jib's Jib has a different style for his um how his letters come in. Uh, 
Thanks for following. So we'll go like uh, bool is jib. This is probably not the best way to write this, but we'll do it anyways. Bool is jib. All right, so if for a jib, we want to do a different delay per letter. Delay in, delay out. Perhaps, perhaps. I kind of like them totally square at first, but it actually might be cool to do some kind of either background or edges or something. So this is in delay per times word index. Uh, I guess the simplest way to do this would be to say if is jib word index plus plus all the time. Otherwise, See if that can get sort of like a terminal effect going. Oh. Oh, okay, good point, Unreal. Yeah. Well, that was weird. They all disappeared. Oh, probably because the out delay. Yeah, so this isn't going to work. So the letter index is J. Let's get a float delay in equals zero. Delay out, zero. For not jib, Delay in equals that. Delay out equals that. If we are jib, hey, what's up, T? I'm great, man. Yeah, I'm just working on dialogue today. It's a dialogue system. So let's go in delay per times the letter index plus box fade duration. And then the out is going to be text size minus J plus box duration. I think that's right. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to have to kind of make a shorter stream today. It's Friday night. We're going out. Sounds making me thirsty. Sweet. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, now they need colors too. And Oh, it'd be so cool to see Jib's text come with like a little cursor. Uh. Hmm.
Thanks for following. Okay, let's get the text color and the box color next. Yeah, it's totally non-linear -linear and it's procedural. So it's based on um, it's based on this talk. Okay, I, I read I heard this talk by these guys at um, at Valve GDC uh, procedural dialogue. So if you want to check it out, here's here's the talk that I read. I read I read their PDF. They re, they released a PDF about it, and they also did this talk. So it's a great thing to kind of look through, but you can create procedural dialogue based on just every one of these little things is a certain dialogue element. And then um, I can set some flags to require some certain flags to go with that re are required for to be able to trigger that bit of dialogue. Or you can set like, okay, if the player has a certain item or whatever. So basically this is gonna be a really flexible system. And then typically each each run of the game you're probably only going to see like 50 or 60 percent of the dialogue because it's all based on what items are even in that world what npcs get end up put into that world right so you know some of these are going to be based on npcs and you're going to get some npcs in some worlds some not in some some worlds some items are going to be in some worlds some are not in some worlds so all of this is like totally dependent on which world you get created so yeah it's a it's a really flexible non-linear um, procedural system. So basically each time you play the game, the story can be a little bit different each time. It's not, it's gonna be overall the same kind of story, but it's a, it'll be a little bit different each time you play it. Yeah, it's, a, it's totally a cool system and these guys taught me how to do it. So I would, I would recommend checking this out, this article, if you're, if you're interested in doing something similar. Yeah, no, it is. It totally is, Arctic Garage. In fact, we can fix that right now. The right margin. Um, let's take this all the way down to zero and see if that fixes it. It has something to do with the way the font. Um, the way that each letter in the font works. Hey, what's up, Fung? Okay, so that that um that wasn't quite right. We need margin X, but I think minus like two or three. Yeah, that's closer to being correct. Let's see what it looks like with Jib's dialogue. Yeah, Jib's is off because Jib, um, huh. Jib's font, the alien font, is not dialed in perfectly yet. Oh, one more thing. I want to make it so the story system um, adds a little bit of delay. So it adds a little bit more delay before it runs the next dialog item. Yeah, a little bit better, right? ASCII art? <laughs> oh, dude, that's a cool idea. Let's see if we can get Jib to do that right now. Oops, wait, hold on. If the font, um, the alien font, I don't know if I put all the right stuff into this alien font, but I might have. Oh yeah, I didn't do all the alien fonts. 
stuff. But I could add it in. I could add in like all this stuff. Yeah, let's just do that right now. We can add in some dialogue by doing this. Hmm. You could try that. I think I would require both those little changes. This we'll check out the uh, the timing too. If it actually adds a little bit of delay per between each uh, bit of dialogue. Oh yeah, I forgot centered. It's so weird, but centered just messes up. I don't know why. It's like off by a character. Let me keep this as an idea to try out later. Once I can try, I need to I need to dial in, like actually zone in on what the hell is going on when it does that. It like doesn't center the text perfectly, and it's it messes with everything in the whole game. So I'll I'll try that again later once I can fix that bug. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I would need so much more, but I, I wouldn't be able. Yeah, I could do this, right? I could at least do these. Yeah, man, Unicode would be a hell of... I couldn't do a Unicode because um, that would be too much work. I couldn't hand pixel all of Unicode. All right, cool. Well, now we've got this one set up. So the alien font. Yeah, it's not fixed. It's a uh, dynamic. Yeah. So the the way it works is um uh, Cocos 2DX uses this thing. It's um, it's a font file .fnt for doing bitmap fonts. So each character gets broken out into a line where it has the X and Y, the width and height that it actually reads from the document here, right? And then it's also got um, the X advance. So this is the most important thing for how how wide each character is. So each character has a different X advance. This one's eight. This one's five, ten, ten. 
So as you go on, that's how it does the dynamic width. It's all based in here in this X advance. And I've actually gone in, I spent the entire morning actually just um, dialing in, making sure this was all perfected. Like all these were, there's always three pixels between each letter. So, but I haven't done it for the alien font yet. So the alien font, I do need to do a perfection, perfect that thing. Oh, so yeah, we could make jib talk like crazy. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Here, let me let me write this down. I'll put this in the ideas. So if I have time and stuff like that, I can implement a whole, a lot more like of these characters. I wouldn't be able to do all of Unicode, but I could do some of these, right? So like we could at least do, we can at least do ASCII art now that I've changed that little, um, a little bit. So like if I want to go do some ASCII craziness. Thanks, PMC. Hmm, it didn't do some of his his text. Oh, because um Alien font doesn't have all of that text. Ooh. I guess I could fix this right now. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's interesting. Look up my diff from this morning. I can actually see what. So I added a bunch of letters to the, all these fonts. I need to add the same letters to. Um, so I need to create 83 to 93 for the alien font. And I need to add this line. That's between, that's at 34. Cool, okay, I can just copy, this is nice. These two lines, 36, 37. Uh, these are 39 through 44. We already had 39. Oh, well, maybe I just changed it. I probably just changed it. And I already had 44. Okay, um, next one is 46, replace. Ninety-one through ninety-four. Oh yeah. Well, I do it for I only do it for some things. Most of the time I'm using git on the command line, right? You know, git log, git diff, git status and all that. But so that's my daily thing and then sometimes when I want to do this like this little special thing where I can see, you know, what's going on with this. This really helps. And 125 got changed. All right, let's see if that works. 
so that when Jib talks and he does this new ASCII art line, it does um, does uh, it shows all those characters now. Yeah, nice. Okay, so we could do basic ASCII art with that. Nice. What's up, Overcaster? Yeah. Okay, um, let's try that out. What the suggestion that um Teak said to try a little bit of randomness with each delay. The map is blinking because it shows you where you currently are when you move. So if you go to a different area. And when you first zoom, when you first start the game, it, it fades in and then shows it. And then, yeah, and then it also blinks when it shows you your current area. Nice, all right, cool. Well, yeah, well, here's what you can do. You can use all the standard letters, all the ASCII below 128, except, well, yeah, you can do everything. So um, let me show you all the characters you can use. They're these. Capital. Let me, let me just make the actual character set for you. So, don't need two M's, don't need two Z's. Put some space in here so you kind of like get a there you go there's the character set for the game currently oh thanks thanks fung <laughs> nice Oh, that's totally a crab. I see his claws. <laughs> Whoa. Kirby? If, yeah, if the first one does well, it'll be a trilogy. Yeah. So, um, we'll see. We'll come, come December or January, we'll know how well it's going to do, you know, financially. If it can financially sustain me to keep developing Songbringer 2 and 3, then yes, there will definitely be more games. But uh yeah, I've never had a game succeed before, so we'll see. But I've never I've also never done a Kickstarter. I've never had a green light success. I've never had all the success that's come with Songbringer so far. And I've never tried to build a following from day 1, and that's that seems to be working for this game, so A trilogy in five parts. <laughs> right? Like just like um the new um the new movies, uh plus four DLCs per game. Okay, let's add a little more random per letter. So we'll get a random factor, actually. We'll go float r equals drandf. 
So we'll do one, it's going to be 1.0 plus DRANDF times something very small, just 5% to start with. And we can multiply everything by this R to give a little bit of randomness to each word or each letter. Victory dance. Oh, nice one. Let's have him let's have him do that right now. <laughs> exactly, Peter Jackson, all of those ones, yeah. The Hobbit movies, but also, um, what was I thinking of? <laughs> That's the pervert. <laughs> Yeah, Xcode's great. It's a pretty great um, editor. Let's go back to his actual line for this for this particular line. I, I want him to actually talk and say something so it makes sense when when Rock replies. Uh, okay, next thing I want to let's do some color, different color for each character for their font. So I'm gonna make um, rocks text a little more a little like more brown and I should put this into the profile component for each for each character actually. Nice. It's cool, man. Good job doing a debug view. That's so important, right? Really helps debug a game when you got debug view. Yeah, I I um do you mean when it comes in or I was thinking of doing an animation where it actually came out of the player's body or whatever, like a single pixel, and went whoop, and then like fade, like animated in. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Okay, rocks text. Looks to be more saturated. Okay, now Jib's text. Let's do. Mm, what color should Jib's text be? Bluish, maybe? Oh, Cyan's kind of cool, like he's like a robot. Cyan. Let's make it 17%. So hopefully that little differentiation helps. Oh, I see what you're saying. Hmm. I don't know if it maybe because I did this so um additive blend funk. Let's make it non additive. 
Yeah, I think I saw that one too. Maybe reddish might be better. Oh, there we go. Now it's got a color. Okay, so I can't use additive. Is it, have you seen any up-to-date articles on that, though? Because the article I read was from January 2014. Whoa, dude. This is procedurally generated. This is so awesome. Well, I would still you could, it's still there. I mean, the article I read was from January 2014 and said that Steam was considering getting rid of Greenlight or changing it to something else. And then, you know, it's it's now what? September 2015, they still haven't done it, so I don't know. Dude, this is so rad. Seriously. It's freaking awesome. You got a tree, these sweet stairs. Holy crap, I'm impressed. Right? They still haven't done anything though. I think Rock's text needs to be slightly less saturated. All right, I think I, I'm kind of running out of steam, you guys. I think I'm going to have to shut the stream down and have a nice Friday night. So, yeah, I think it's the last time I'm going to run the game here. I think I want the dialogues to be a little snappier, too, so a little faster and stuff. But yeah, so that's a that's a lot of progress for one day though. Uh, so yeah, all right, you guys, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna be going uh, back and streaming tomorrow, uh, same wizard time. But yeah, if anybody's just joining the stream, this is a game called Songbringer. Um, it's a procedurally generated Zelda-like game. And it's coming out in um, this January, something like that. And you can pre-order the game, too. If you pre-order the game, you get your name in the credits on the main menu. And you can pre-order it at songbringer.com. So that's it.